I was at Toronto Film Festival and there's still movies I gotta talk about. Let's talk about them. One of them was the new Roy Anderson film about endlessness. Roy Anderson has directed quite a few movies, but in the year 2000, he started kind of an interesting series of films. Songs from the Second Floor, You the Living, A Pigeon Sat on a Branch Reflecting on Existence, and this newest film are all very similar. Essentially, it's a bunch of different short stories and scenes that play along with the same style. The scenes have elements of both comedy and drama. Many of them feature awkward situations. Some of the scenes are intricate and well-coordinated, while others are fairly simple. All four of these films have a really interesting color palette. There's lots of gray and light green, and everything feels like it's more or less decaying. There's a very specific way that the director wants these films to look, and he pulls it off very well. The scenes are lit in ways where there's virtually no shadows. It is a very unique style, and that brings a lot to the film. The concepts of each scene are sometimes dreamlike and metaphorical, and other times they're quite literal. Oftentimes, the audio from the previous scene will carry forward into the next one, meaning if there's something like a church bell present in one scene, you'll hear it softly in the background of the next scene. It's an interesting way to tie things together when they would otherwise be completely separate scenes. The stories often include ideas of faith, purpose, and existence. It is a slower film, and it's certainly not for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. My favorite one of these films is probably You the Living, so if you're unsure about this one, then you can probably check that one out first. And I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Another film I saw at the festival was Honey Boy with Actual Cannibal Shia LaBeouf. This film is essentially an autobiographical account of Shia LaBeouf growing up and doing things like Even Stevens and the Transformers movies. So Shia LaBeouf actually wrote this film, and the character is not explicitly said to be him, but it's clearly supposed to be. The main conflict of this film revolves around his relationship with his dad, who Shia LaBeouf is playing. This is probably actually one of my favorite performances from him. He did a really great job getting into the character and pulling off the accent. It's an interesting project that feels as though it must have been very cathartic for him. All of the other actors were solid. Most of the movie is pretty interesting and watchable. My biggest issue with it is that it just didn't know how to end. It was kind of one of those, okay, it's time to end the movie now, so let's get on with it sort of things. There wasn't anything really all that amazing when it came down to the soundtrack or the visuals. It was all pretty solid in that sense, but there wasn't really anything memorable about it. There are parts of this movie that are certainly memorable, but overall it didn't leave a huge impression on me. I Either way, it's a really solid film and I would recommend it. And I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Another film I saw was Lucy in the Sky, and I think it was the worst film I saw all festival. This is the feature-length directorial debut of Noah Hawley, who is a writer for shows like Bones, Legion, and Fargo. There are aspects to this film that are certainly ambitious, but unfortunately it does not come together well at all. Natalie Portman's performance was pretty great, and it's unfortunate that it was wasted on this movie. Now, there are a few films out there that have changing aspect ratios. The times where that's been used in films from Xavier Dolan or Trey Edward Schultz have, for the most part, been pretty purposeful. Oftentimes, when the technique is used, it's so subtle you won't notice it. But this film did that in probably the most obnoxious way I've ever seen. I swear to fucking god, the aspect ratio changed about 30 times in the first 10 minutes. The first time it happened, it kind of made sense. First she was out in space and it was widescreen. Then she comes back down to Earth and it's four by three. I was like, oh, okay, so you're trying to communicate that she feels better out in space and her world is more open and then it kind of closes off when she returns home and she doesn't like it as much. But then it just did whatever the fuck it wanted. And these were not subtle changes in the slightest. Whenever the black bars appeared on screen, you would see them shift into place. It would go from 16 by nine to 2.2 to four by three to 2.2 again. Some of the aspect ratios were so extreme and ridiculous and I don't know why they did it. All of a sudden we're at a golf course and it changes to like 16 by 2. Why is this scene in particular being one that we're seeing in super, super, super widescreen? There was a point where it was 4 by 3, but it was all the way to the left of the frame. And as Natalie Portman walks over to the right side of the frame, the aspect ratio shifts along the screen with her. Like they filmed the shot in 16 by 9, but then just selectively decided which parts of the screen you would be able to see at any given point in time. It was so fucking distracting 
distracting and obnoxious, and I have no idea why they did it. What the hell were you trying to do? And that wasn't the only aspect of the movie that was visually unappealing. Without any exaggeration, the computer effects in this movie looked as though they were dated by about 15 years. On top of that, the story was pretty lame. When Noah Hawley was introducing the film before it started, he said that the one thing he hoped he achieved was presenting the character in a way where her motivations are clear and we could understand her, which is pretty fucking embarrassing because that's one of the worst aspects of the movie. Nothing she did made any sense. I couldn't relate to her, I couldn't understand her. She's just crazy. I guess I'm gonna get into spoiler territory with this one, but it doesn't really matter because it's kind of a shit movie, but if you don't want to see spoilers for this movie, just skip to this part in the video. There's your warning, three, two, one. So apparently this movie was based on a real astronaut named Lisa Nowak. She's an astronaut that went crazy and tried to kidnap somebody, but the one thing you'll find in every article about this story is that she was wearing adult diapers when she got arrested. She was driving across the country to kidnap the guy and didn't want to use the bathroom, so she just went in her diapers instead, but they didn't include that part in the movie. That was like the one thing that made the story funny and interesting. Instead, they shoehorned her daughter into the script and had her go with her for some reason. It was really silly either way, but why would you get rid of that? Also, I should mention when the movie starts, it really obnoxiously hams up that it's a true story. On the left side of the screen, you see the words, this film is based on, and then a few seconds later, the words, a true story show up. Like, bam, this is some serious shit here. It's a true story, so it's better. Anyway, this movie was pretty bad. I have seen very few films that were as annoyingly presented as this one. Even without the obnoxious aspect ratio changes, it was still kind of a really lame, boring movie. It was pretty full of itself and clearly thought it was something much more than it was. The attempt at a dramatic finale was just laughable. It was trash. Check this one out if you want, but I would not recommend it. And I'm giving this one a 3 out of 10.